Most sellers make the huge mistake of not consulting this super powerful tool before they launch their products on Amazon. That tool is Amazon's Product Opportunity Explorer. Amazon's Product Opportunity Explorer is a free tool available to all sellers, but most sellers don't even know where to find it, let alone how to use it properly. In this video, I'm gonna be screen sharing through with my buddy Mark Puco exactly step-by-step -step how to use Amazon Product Opportunity Explorer to get an edge in your Amazon selling. We're gonna be walking through how to see which of your competitors are getting the most clicks for specific search terms despite not having the reviews for it. Let's dig right into this. Let's skip to the insights um, tab. I think this one is very interesting and for me there are three main takeaways or three use cases. They talk about for the product detail page optimization part, um, the one you would wanna look into is the share. So in this case um, for dog leash, you will see that the time frames, right? Nine, today, 90 days and 360 days ago. But on average, it seems like close to 50% of the click share is going to the top five brands. Yeah, I mean, and there are spaces, especially in like, for example, like home decor, it's way lower and it's just way more distributed. Like the top five brands get like a minority of shares because it's so subjective. Exactly, so this tab for me is, is a very good one for product development, but I think now, we're getting into the very juicy part for product detail page optimization. So if we click on average price here, we'll see over the last year, over the course of the last year, how it's moved. Ideally, unless we're getting way better deals with our supply source or manufacturer, we want that price to be increasing. Yeah, it's interesting because these two graphs sometimes tell a story together. The number of product offerings and the price, that the product offerings, number of offerings as it goes up, the price can go down. Mm, seasonally, you'll find that you know there's more toy sellers uh, over Q4. Yeah, they jump into the market opportunistic. That's right. One thing that the graph doesn't show, though, that's that's really interesting is, OK, if the average price is going down, that sucks. That's bad for us because it means that it's harder for us to be competitive, price competitive, and we may need to lower our prices, i.e. lower our margins in order to compete. So it seems like a bad thing, but what we're not seeing on this graph is the price disparity. Wide is the gap in price. So this is giving you an average, but what I'd, I'd love to see sometime in the future from Amazon is like a graph that represents the price disparity that shows like how wide is the gap in top selling products price. And if we go back in the products tab, we could actually look at kind of get a distribution, right? We would have to more manually look into it, but we can see what is the highest, what is the lowest. Of course, it would be way better if Amazon gave us some buckets and say, would say, hey, top 25 or 25% are the price range of five to six, 30% uh, in the six to seven, whatever. But we can have like a little peek into it if we download this and we we manipulate the sheet a little bit um, we might be able to put that in perspective with that manual work next interesting one is the purchase drivers i think now purchase drivers and customer review insights i usually use them quite a bit both for optimizing copy there's two parts here we do have positive and negative features actually um, usually you would like to look into the positive ones, especially if you're optimizing it. But you can also look into the negative ones whenever you're doing an us versus them table. Then you can take the negative ones and say, hey, look, this is what people don't like. For dog leash, in this case, it's just different styles, different models. So it might not be as helpful. But when you look into collagen, for example, as I was doing before, um, you do have certain features of the product like taste, right? That... Uh, might be a negative impact. This is such an important factor that it's like something that deserves way more attention than it gets. Like for example, we actually have a product that's not a leash, but a vest, a dog vest, right? And uh, we were able to split test the primary image from having it look reflective to having it look ridiculously reflective. And those are two different things. Also, another similar story of what went down with one of our toy brands where it was glow in the dark and glow in the dark was one of these top positive features, right? But we made it look ridiculously glow in the dark. In fact, we made it look radioactive, right? Like it was like uh, made of plutonium or something. And it had a dramatic impact. Uh, both of those changes, you know, that I just mentioned as examples had dramatic impacts on the click-through rate. Maybe all of them look reflective. That might be the case where you, if this has already been caught on. 
but you find a way to make it look more reflective. Um, we had another case which was like light up rollerblades and um, some of them look like there's lights in there and then some of them look like trails of spinning lights almost like if you were on acid or something and you saw the lights like you know whizzing by you and that made it you know that increased click through rate significantly so there's always another way to communicate whatever this positive feature is to get more clicks also at the same time we might have to be careful <laughs> just just with the returns and reviews let's not make it um look totally different than what the user is going to get later in reality as well that just yeah, would that's be the right. caveat which we have to add here um if you have a video on your page which we highly suggest of course um then the user will be able to get a better view on how the the product looks like in real life let's go into the customer review insights so this one i really really love um because you have the topic and subtopics um and so this for me is always title material I'll start with the main keyword, then I'll add, after the keywords I want to add, I'll add my benefits and uh, features and USPs. It seems to be very important, right? More than one third of reviews mention the quality. And then you have multiple examples of how you could be talking about quality in general, right? Obviously you cannot say, I have the best leash, no? But here you have some more, right? Um, they're talking about safety, um, they talking about uh, that it can retract. So quite a few ideas um, in case, you know, ChatGPT is not giving you any good ideas or you're not being, you know, you don't have a creative moment right now. You could actually um, get some very good info here. But apart from, you know, the good things, which you have quite a few that you can use for both your title and your images when you're talking about benefits and, and features. This again, you can use for your us versus others and you can turn them around. If durability is a main concern. Won't break on the first use. Exactly. Is, is durable. Correct. Doesn't break quickly like other brands, you know. Exactly, exactly. So this is very interesting and you'll see in the bottom some you know, some charts on how that's, those are developing over time, dimensions of specific topics, and you get a visual representation as well of the importance of the different um, topics we just discussed, like uh, quality, for example, which here is huge, right? So you would want to focus on quality for your product data page optimization in this case. And then we have one final tab, which is not very applicable for product detail page optimization. It is in, in some way, right? If we go back to the review, kind of uh, what we found in the review insights, just your ability, thickness, weight, and so on and so forth. So you always wanna make sure to use these if they also really apply to your product. Yeah, and returns is one of the biggest unaccounted for costs yeah. of yeah. a brand. It's, it's huge. It's a really big cost component because every return carries a cost equal to the landed checked in cost, meaning the product, the production cost, the shipping cost, the, the inventory fee, even the long-term storage fees combined to the unit cost. That's your cost of, of each and every return, you know, and every brand has a return rate anywhere between half a percent and 4%. I mean, there are some spaces that go significantly higher, like apparel, yeah. right? And that, and that's a really big cost. It's, I, it, I rarely see this in the forecast for a new product launch for some reason, even yeah. though it's one of the most significant costs. So yeah. getting this down is one of the biggest levers for margin, right? Like if you can get your return rate down, your yeah. overall margin for that, that product will go up. Uh, in Spain, you say it's better to prevent than to cure. So yeah, having a good, right. um, a good um, study on return rate before launching your new product would be very, very beneficial. And um, yeah, that kind of um, um, leads to our last tab for the Product Opportunity Explorer for today, for the case of product detail page optimization. Although we've talked a little bit on uh, about new product development and that will be the main focus for next time. Yeah, this is a sick uh, first broad overview. Obviously, we're gonna do a couple more episodes on this. Hopefully you guys got value out of this about how to use Product Opportunity Explorer to get insights to help with product detail page optimization, with click-through rate optimization. And we're gonna go deeper on each of these cases, especially the next one we're gonna do, which is product development next time. So 
Thanks, Mark. This has been awesome. Already can't yeah. wait for the next one. Exactly. Let us know if you have any specific things we want to or you want us to talk about more. Could also be interesting if you have any specific questions. Um, yeah, we'd love to share some more light on those. Yeah, that's right. All right. Peace out, everybody. Peace, Ciao. buddy. There you have it, guys. That's Amazon's Product Opportunity Explorer. There are so many more features in this tool that we could go through, and I'll do that in some future videos. This was actually part two of a two-part video, so if you wanna capture part one, you can catch that one in the corner of this video now. See you guys next time.